Welcome friends, this is the fifth video on my mini lecture series on clinical anatomy and the, today's lecture or today's topic would be on anatomical basis of myringotomy in the posto inferior quadrant of the tympanic membrane. So to know the myringotomy which is any surgical incision done in the ear tympanic membrane in the posto inferior quadrant of the tympanic membrane first we have to understood the anatomic or anatomical structure of the tympanic membrane so let us see the tympanic membrane this is a tympanic membrane of my right ear when seen from the lateral aspect there are two folds a posterior malleable fold and an anterior malleable fold okay and the part of the tympanic membrane between these two folds is known as pars flaccida and the rest part of the tympanic membrane is known as pars tensa from the junction of this malleable fold extend a uh, part of the ear ossicle which is known as handle of malleus which is present in between the fibrous and the mucous layer of the tympanic membrane there are three layers of the tympanic membrane first is the cuticular layer outermost cuticular layer middle is known as the fibrous layer and the innermost layer is known as mucous layer so the handle of malleus lies here between the fibrous and the mucous layer another important structure lies between the fibrous and the mucous layer is the nerve which is known as quadra tympani nerve which is running from posterior aspect of the tympanic membrane to its anterior aspect and which will come out from the pitro tympanic fissure join the lingual nerve and supply the taste sensations or carry the taste sensations of the anterior two third of the tongue okay if we divide this tympanic membrane into four quadrants a uh, antero superior quadrant posto superior quadrant posto inferior quadrant antero inferior quadrant okay and when we re, uh, give a light to the um, uh, ear canal into the tympanum we see a cone of light reflected light in the antero inferior quadrant which is known as cone of light which is produced due to the convexity or tenting of the tympanic membrane caused due to the handle of the malleus okay this cone of light represents or signifies the structure of the tympanic membrane if it is normal or it is abnormal if the structure of the tympanic membrane is normal then this cone of light will be present and if this is abnormal like in case of otitis media or increase middle ear cavity pressure then this cone of light would be absent okay another important thing that we have to keep in mind that the blood supply of this tympanic membrane comes from above downwards all the blood vessels so the blood vessels are coming from above downwards okay now if we have to do any surgical incision if any surgical incision we have to give in which quadrant we will give the preferred sign or quadrant is the and postro inferior quadrant this area why let us look into the basis of it in the upper part we have seen that the this nerve is present very important nerve quadrant tympanic nerve is present okay also in the upper part the blood vessels are coming downwards if we give any surgical incision here this blood vessel will get ruptured and the supply to this lower part will be hindered and there will be ischemia here so it is not given in the upper part at all what about on the antero inferior quadrant in the antero inferior quadrant we have seen the presence of the cone of light if we do any surgical incision here 
then it will disturb the cone of light and we will not be able to diagnose in his or her future any pathologies of the middle ear. So this quadrant is not used for surgical incision because it will hinder the cone of the light. So what remains is the posto inferior quadrant. Another important cause of choosing this area is that this area has very rich vascular supply. So it will any incision given at this level will heal faster. Okay. So this explains the anatomical basis of myringotomy done in the posto inferior quadrant of ear tympanic membrane. Thank you.